Uh, we're going to go now to talk about capitalism, in essence, and tax breaks. And joining us on Zoom, uh, I don't know if you expected that conversation ahead of you, but Steve Young, thanks for joining us tonight. No problem, Laura. Happy to be here. So we wanted you to explain to us the tax break. $400 million. They're describing it as historic, but it's yet again another tax break because we have a huge surplus. Can you kind of set the table here for us about what led to this? For sure. Our state has done phenomenally well economically. And in our you know, $20 billion state budget, we had a budget surplus of about $4 billion. And the legislature chose to give about 10% of that back to the people through a tax cut and then chose to spend the other 90% on you know, additional you know, education needs and so forth in the state. And of that uh, $400 million of a tax cut, roughly 200 million of it is an income tax cut that has you know various components. And then 200 million is taking the sales tax off of, of food in the state of Utah. So Steve, I, I guess my question is how will, how will we as recipients of this tax cut and I guess tax break, how will we see it in our wallets? How yeah. is it hit in our pockets? How much do I get? Yeah, it's a really good question. And you know, typically we're used to seeing red states uh, the perception is they they give tax breaks to the wealthy and to the to the businesses, and there certainly is some of that that's done, you know, often for economic development purposes, and you know it's it's worked very well in Utah. But in this case, Utah actually imposed a tax cut that had quite a bit of impact on the on the poor, on the on the lower income elements. So, for instance, in the income tax cut, there there was a, a rate cut for everyone from 4.85 to 4.65. But there was also a benefit by exempting more uh, Social Security um, payments for the elderly, uh, moved that uh, threshold up to give more people that benefit so they don't have to pay tax on their Social Security. They expanded the earned income tax credit for the poor. They created a new child tax credit for the poor. They created a double dependent exemption for babies in the year of birth for those having children. So basically, they, they've ex expanded that. And then Lastly, on the income tax side, they gave an intergenerational poverty uh, matching program where if, if some family that's in intergenerational poverty will contribute to a 529 uh, mm -hmm. savings plan, the state will match that up to $500 a year. So so a lot of things that you know smell maybe more like something you'd see in a blue state than a red state because Utah looked at it and said, hey, we've given you know a lot of incentives for businesses to locate here in the past. This year, with our extra money, we're going to take most of that and just give it back uh, in a tax cut to the lower income folks. And, and the sales tax on food, for instance, is, you know, it's a bad idea from a tax policy perspective to take the sales tax off of food because when the economy goes down and you need money to fund the government and, feed, you know, help the school children, food is the one thing that people still buy. So, uh, you know, from a pure, pure policy perspective, it doesn't make sense. But politically, it's a really popular thing. Only 11 states still have a sales tax on food, Utah being one of them. Now Utah's taking it off. And the well, reason they well, take it wait, off wait, is, wait, wait, Steve. Are wait, we fully taking it off? Because we got to pass a constitutional amendment, right, to take the earmark off of income tax for education. And if that doesn't happen at the ballot in the fall, then the, income, the uh, sales tax on food stays, correct? Yeah, you're exactly right. Although they did amend that constitutional amendment the last night so it's no longer a, a pure removal of the earmark it just now says that uh we can spend money out of the income tax fund on things other than education if the educational uh needs are met so so education still is is guaranteed to get their funding uh and then once those needs are met they're they're allowed if the constitutional amendment passes to use those funds for for other things all right, we're talking with CPA Steve Young. He's currently a tax attorney at Holland and Hart Salt Lake City office, one of the state's foremost tax experts. He's lobbied state tax and local issues before the Utah legislature, the Utah State Tax Commission, and local governments. All right, so I'm guessing if you heard that first conversation there, Steve, you're probably going to not be surprised with this next question. From a policy perspective of folks who are deep in the weeds, um, from perhaps a conservative mindset, repealing the sales tax on food doesn't make sense because when times turn down, like you were saying, then the government needs that money, money to run. But there's a whole group, including interfaith group, that feels it's immoral to tax food. How do you have that conversation 
um, with folks to, to kind of explain tax policy. Maybe you can enlighten us a little bit is what I'm asking. I'm not asking for, for, for a, a religious view. Just how do we, how do we read that? Yeah, it's, it's a good, a good question. And, and my perception has always been that, you know, wealthy people eat a lot more or spend a lot more on food than, than poor people. And so, you know, it, it, it maybe is a something to consider to make it more targeted and just exempt it for those who are under a certain income level, which I think makes some sense. But around the country, including in Utah now, you know, the policy is sales tax on food is immoral, um, period, for everybody. And so let's go ahead and exempt it for everybody, the, the wealthy, the, the poor, and everybody else. And so that's now what we've done and taken the full sales tax off of food. Now, the local portion of the sales tax is still on the food because, you know, the the local rural areas especially need that just to to operate. And so that part is, is still on there. So of our our 7% sales tax rate, you know, 4.85% of that is the state portion, which is what's coming off. But there's still a 2% local option sales tax that will remain on food even going forward. Every time I turn around, I'm like, wait, we forgot about this part over here, Rashawn. <laughs> Well, I guess the question is, do, do our citizens need to do anything? It, it, there's, there's no applications, right? We just benefit from this just by existing in Utah? Yeah, and that, that's the argument, uh, you know, that it, it, if you target it to the poor, they have to go fill out an application. But now it's just pure walk into, you know, Smith's or Harmon's and buy your groceries and there just will be no tax added, which is the way it is in, you know, 40 other states already. So, Steve, if you could wave a magic wand, is there a reform that you would like to see proposed and enacted here in Utah? You've got a wish list uh, sitting handy? Well, you know, it's, it's interesting to look at, you know, the states surrounding Utah, Nevada and Wyoming have zero income tax. Um, Washington and Texas have zero income tax. And so that, that's sort of the, the direction. And if you look at the, the, a lot of states around the country in the last five years, Arizona went clear down to a like 3% tax rate. Um, North Carolina went clear down to a 3% tax rate. It, it, you know, many, many states are, are recognizing the economic development benefits of lower income taxes. And where we're sandwiched between, you know, Wyoming and Nevada, I do feel like what the legislature is doing by moving the income tax rate down as much as they can is positive for the future benefits of our, our economy and for funding our education system and our other uh, systems here. We have been rated the number one economy in the in the country for many years in a row, and that I think is a, a reflection of our our positive, you know, beneficial tax policies that we have because we we don't get rid of tax altogether, like some states. We just say we're going to try to keep the rates low and keep the base broad, and, and make sure we're not penalizing people for putting their you know em, employing people here. No, I, I like that. I like that. And what I'm, I, I guess I'm also excited about is to see what we're going to do with all this uh, money coming from medicinal marijuana. <laughs> because there's a lot of, you know, when you when you start naming these states that are around us, you know, we have Nevada. They've got gambling. We have, they've got we, we, full wreck. We have yeah, Colorado. I mean, they're, they're you know, s- s- tripping over hand and foot over money over there. So is that something that, that they're talking about, about with these uh, tax dollars? Well, it's an interesting perspective, but I do think Utah's uh, budget surpluses have even far surpassed those. So yeah. wow. I'm not sure. I, I, what I, is the I, offset I'd, in the other states, I guess, is our question, Steve. If they're able to get it down to zero, what is it? Is it is it gambling? Is it um, recreational marijuana? What pays for that when they take it all the way down? And is, does Utah have anything like that that you know we could use to uh, remove fully the income tax? Yeah, clearly Nevada has gambling. That's what's allowed them to to mm-hmm. do that. They get a lot of tax from from that. Uh, Wyoming has had natural resources mm-hmm. uh, that have funded their government. Same with Alaska. They have, don't have an income tax. You know, um, Texas um, has really, really high property taxes. So you, you have to get your money somehow. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, I frankly, I think Utah has been pretty smart because we have you know, what we call the, the three-legged stool. We have a low low sales tax, a low income tax, and a low property tax. And by by using that balance, we, uh, we're able to still encourage a, a strong economy. We have a lot of other things in the state that encourage people to locate here, a well-educated workforce, you know, a clean, um, crime-free environment for the most part. And, and, you know, employers really like that. And people continue to just 
move their businesses to Utah, which is why our economy stays so, so strong. Well, Steve, thanks so much for giving us some time and putting up with our, our silly questions. Because obviously, that. I'm still struggling to fill out my own taxes <laughs> for the year and understand them. Um, and I'd love to have you back, maybe pick your brain about incentives, what we're willing to invest in and say, you build this, we'll give you this, versus uh, investing directly in, in people. So can we have you back? Love to. I know a lot about incentives in the state. Let's go. All right. Steve. We'll book you again. We'll get a panel on that because I always love to explore that.